Hi, <clears throat> I am R. Pradeep Kumar. Know your IS code provisions short lecture series. I am going to discuss today uh, clause number 3.22 that is responses spectrum. In fact, it is a it is definition, definition of response spectrum. Now, what is this response spectrum? You know, response spectrum is, is a plot um, that is uh, on x-axis, either natural period or natural frequency will be there. And on y-axis, maximum uh, quantity. This maximum quantity can be displacement, velocity, or acceleration. So usually, when uh, earthquake occurs, structures vibrate to and fro, uh, go to and fro motion. So this time history is not very important for designers. So for design, what is required is the maximum quantity, either maximum displacement, maximum velocity, and maximum acceleration. Now it will be good if that plot is uh, readily available and it is used for design purpose. So let's go into the details. So I'm sharing my screen. Now, know your IS code provisions, uh, clause number 3.22 response spectrum. This clause is from IS 1893-2016-1. Now what code says is, it is the representation of maximum responses of a spectrum of idealized single degree of freedom systems of different natural periods, but having the same damping under the action of same earthquake ground motion at their basis. So that means, so we uh, compute the maximum value of suit of uh, uh, structures ranging from different uh, uh, small natural period to large natural period and subject them to earthquake ground motion, single component of earthquake ground motion. And all structures are assumed to have the same uh, damping. So the response referred to here can be maximum absolute acceleration, maximum relative velocity or maximum relative displacement. So three quantities, either maximum relative displacement, maximum relative velocity or absolute acceleration, maximum absolute acceleration. Let's look at this concept. Let's take say three structures whose masses are different and stiffnesses are different. But the ratio of mass and stiffness is such that uh, their natural periods are same. That is T1 is equal to T2 is equal to T3. So if T1, T2, T3 are same, then for a given component of earthquake ground motion, maximum response is same for all the oscillators. So that is the concept. Okay. So how this is constructed, let us uh, like look at it. The maximum response of linear single degree of freedom system to any given component of earthquake ground motion depends only on natural frequency or period and damping. Now this uh, concept of response spectrum is extremely useful in earthquake engineering research and in applying the seismological knowledge of strong earthquake to the design of structures. Because in design, we need the maximum quantities for design. So this is initiated by Hugo uh, Benioff in 1934. And then it was extended to the applications of earthquake engineering by M.M. Biot in 1941. Now, what are the uses? For engineering purpose, we are not especially concerned with the time variation of these parameters, that is uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. But what we need for design is the uh, extreme value, that is maximum value, which is required. So they are related to maximum forces because these maximum values are related to maximum forces, maximum displacement, maximum deformations that structures must be able to endure. Now, how to construct a response spectrum? Now, it is a plot of maximum response of a linear single degree of freedom system of oscillators as a function of natural period for a given damping. Okay. Response can be these three quantities. Now, something like this one. So, take a, a, like many, many oscillators that is linear, idealized linear single degree of freedom system oscillators uh, having range of natural periods. Maybe starting starting from 0 0.005 seconds natural period up to say 10 seconds, 20 seconds like that. And take say a component of ground motion, one component of ground motion and measure subject this ground motion to the linear single degree of freedom system. 
and measure the uh, maximum value. Okay, measure the maximum value. You can use any uh, method. So here, uh, suggested method is uh, Newmark method. So let's look at this one here. So this ground motion that is L centro, uh, like southeast component of uh, ground motion is taken, and there are three structures here. So one structure natural period is say 0.5 second. Another structure's natural period is one second, and the third structure's natural period is two seconds. And look at here, all are having equal damping. That is two percent damping, two percent, two percent, two percent. And all these structures are subjected to uh, this central ground motion. And here is the time history. So this is time history for 0.5 seconds uh, uh, structure with 0.5 second natural period. This is one second uh, natural period structure response. And this is two seconds natural period uh, structures respond. And from here, uh, we pick the maximum value of that one and plot that dot against that natural period, horizontal axis natural period. As you can see, three natural period that maximum value is plotted like that for suit of the, for a range of natural periods, the same uh, that maximum values are plotted here. Okay, so then. If we calculate the maximum response of for a range of values of frequency or natural period and a damping and portray the results graphically like this one, we then have a spectrum chart that shows the maximum response of all possible single degree of freedom systems to that component of ground motion. So once we have this graph, that means in a city, if you take so any earthquake or any structure you take, that will have some period, some natural period if you calculate. And if we get the maximum value of that, so we can design that structure or check whether the structure can sustain that much demand or not. Now, the response may be identified as we can plot that separately. So it can be spectral displacement, spectral velocity, or spectral acceleration. So this is pseudo spectral velocity and pseudo spectral uh, acceleration, so uh, displacement. So A is deformation or displacement. B, uh, this one is pseudo velocity, and then third one is pseudo uh, spectral acceleration, three values. Now, all three the responses, these curves can be plotted on a, on, a, on a plot called tripartite plot, like this one. So, here, horizontal axis, you can see this is uh, natural frequency, on, and vertical axis is velocity. And these quantities are uh, aligned in such a way that so, if we draw a inclined 45 degrees line on two uh, from two sides, one will represent uh, on a log scale. One will represent displacement, another one will represent acceleration. So, all three quantities. So, once we measure a quantity on the curve, so uh, like from there, uh, drawing a line, a perpendicular line to any of the axis will give that quantity. So, let's look at one example. So, consider a structure shown in figure this figure and let the structure be subjected to ground motion whose spectrum is given to us. So, and if damping is 5% of critical, then what are the spectral quantities? So mass is given and stiffness of the structure is given. So with that, we can calculate the natural period of the structure using this formula. So uh, Tn is equal to 2 pi by omega n, whereas omega n is under root k by n. So we get this one 6.324 radians per second and then natural period of the structure is calculated as one second. One second. Now in this tripartite uh, uh, graph, so natural period of natural frequency, both are same, one, one over t is natural frequency. So if we take that frequency value and hit the plot uh, curve uh, with that percentage of damping, 5% of damping, and then draw perpendicular line, lines to vertical axis, that is uh, line to vertical axis, that is velocity, and displacement line, this is horizontally in inclined 45 degrees, um, draw a uh, perpendicular line to that, and acceleration uh, uh, line also draw perpendicular to that, and read the quantities. So spectral displacement is 4 inches, that is 10.16 centimeters, and pseudo spectral velocity is 63.5 centimeters per second, and pseudo spectral acceleration is 0.4 g, that is uh, 392 centimeters per second square. So this is how response spectrum is plotted. So in next uh, short lecture, I will be discussing uh, about how to uh, convert this response spectrum, in fact spectra, into design spectrum and how to uh, use that as per the uh, code provisions, code provision. 
So uh, the intention of the short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers understand IS code provisions. And for uh, preparation of this one, uh, the following references are used. And uh, I sincerely acknowledge uh, my PhD students and master students in the preparation of these uh, slides. So thank you. Have a nice day.